that we were talking last night, and it is important that everyone to hear it, not just a small group of people sitting upstairs, that Prophet Sallallahu came to perfect character, and the perfection of character through all of the religious practices and actions. The lives of pious people give for us an example of that reality in action. And when we read Tasqiyat al the lives of pious people, or any of the books of pious people and their life stories, there were certain events that take place in their life and their hearts open. Allah grants them an opening and what we say as the amanat and the trust that is hidden within the soul begins to pour open within that soul. And that person granted ilma laduni wa hikmati bi salihin and many, many different realities of what Allah is going to open upon the heart and the soul of the individual. And many stories, one famous pious person on his way for hajj and going, going, going and reaches upon a well and brings water for himself to drink from that well and begins to drink that water and then realizes there's a dog that's thirsty and he gives water to the dog. He puts the bucket back down, gives water to the dog and at that moment heart opens and he begins to describe what Allah poured into my hearts of realities from the simple action of giving that dog water is unimaginable. And then we have even Imam Ghazali that all his life struggling in the way of Allah in the way of the Divine and heart never truly opening to the realities that he as a scholar knew about. And right when at the point that he's losing hope and praying out to Allah that why Ya Rabbi I my heart to open, my heart to open and it was the night of Mawli the Nabi Sassan. And he was looking and writing and his notes and he said to himself that for the sake of Prophet Sassan, that I'm creation and this fly is Allah's creation, I'm allowing this fly to drink from my inkwell. Because the fly was buzzing around trying to get access to the inkwell which had water in it. He waited, the fly drank and action was done but his heart began to open. He began to hear and see and witness realities that Allah describes, no man has heard and no eye has seen. And pious people come into our lives and say, well it's not just that action. Like you can't go looking for flies to give them water to open your heart. But what they're teaching us is the greater understanding that every action is based on intention. Doesn't matter what religion you are following. Every action is based on intention. They come into our lives and perfect the intention. Otherwise the action doesn't count. They're teaching at the levels of perfection at the maqams of perfection, Allah is going to account is the best of hisab. Look at that amal and say, but what was the intention of that amal? If that action was for my Divinely Presence, then it has a tremendous weight in Divinely Presence. If the action was to be known of men, then it has no weight in Divinely Presence. Because you got your reward from men. So then all our life is about taking account of our actions. <coughs> so why the people of Tasawwuf have such nearness to the Divinely Presence? Why people who contemplate and reflect have such a nearness to the Divinely Presence? Because every action they do has a tremendous weight in Divinely if we don't take an accounting of our action, we may be doing many things that we deem to be very good, but they're not reaching the perfection in Divinely Presence and not reaching Allah's rida. They say the zikr of all our lives, Ilahi anta maqsudi wa ridat 
that we're begging your forgiveness and seeking your satisfaction. In every action, my Lord, I'm begging your forgiveness and seeking your satisfaction. I know that what I'm going to do is going to have things that are going to upset you. I'm begging that forgiveness, but grant me your satisfaction. So then they said, sit with the people of good manners and good character. They teach us the way of good characteristics. It means they say that if you're praying to be seen by people as somebody who's amazing in your prayers, long in your prayers, perfect in your recitations, everything so amazing that people are impressed by it, then you got your account from the people. And it wasn't for Allah It's everything to do, to do hidden, to do secret, to do for your Lord and only for your Lord because that requires faith. If you're giving, who are you giving for? Some people say, I'm going to give, but you got to make a whole name for me. Because they don't really believe in Allah, they want to be eternally known in dunya. Means are you giving to be seen by people and known by people, then you'll get your reward from people. So just every action that we do, they take us and say, now turn it up a notch, perfect the action, make sure that the action is purely for the Divine and then we put it with a post-it note all around our house. My actions should be only for the Divine the Presence. If I govern my life with that just simple understanding, all my actions should have a tremendous weight. Then it begins to answer many of our life issues. We want to be generous and compassionate and we go out and help family members or loved ones. And what do we get in return is a complaint, a cursing, a fight, an argument. And many, we sit with people all day long, people come with the same story, the same issue. But they're not getting the teaching and the understanding that the tariqs come to bring, the teaching of perfection. If you're helping people for the satisfaction of people to praise you, good luck. Because they threw Sayyidina Isa salam on a cross, Jesus Christ, peace and blessings be upon him, twelve students. And one student sold him. And he comes والسلام, into our hearts and teaches, if you're doing it for people, you will be sold. Because people by their nature, they're going to sell you. They're going to harm you. They're going to insult you and humiliate you. If you're doing it for the people, you're doing it for the wrong thing. And you're going to be disappointed and most likely you're going to stop doing it. And they come and teach us, no, you do it for Allah. Because it requires faith that I'm doing it for my Lord and He is the best of those to keep His hub. And He keeps the account, He keeps the account and then He's going to test you on that understanding and test you and make that person to come against you. And truly believe, Ya Rabbi, I don't care. I don't care for them. I don't care what they do or don't do. I do what I do only for you. And that Sayyidina Muhammad and all the Prophets be pleased with us. If it's truly the Divine that we love, then truly the intention should only be for His Divinely Presence, His Divinely Satisfaction. You're good to people and now here comes the big one. So why aren't you polite to this person? Why aren't you nice to this person? Well because the biggest sin in Divinely Presence is making yourself to be a partner with God, what we call shirk. Means you make yourself to be a partner with God and the worst partnership is to get in the business of judging. Because Allah judges. Divine is the only judge of creation. Means they begin to perfect our character. You're, if you are distrusting and disliking and judging of people, you're in a big problem with the Divine Presence because the Divine is teaching, now you are making a shirk with me, you are getting into my business. My business is to judge this creation, I created them with love. Your business merely to serve them and to love them. This is big, this is difficult in our lives. It means everything for us is not to judge. 
Because as soon as you judge as if you put a chair next to God's chair and say, oh, no, 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 not this one, no, 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 oh, no, no, this one, this one bad one, this one violent one, this one horrible one, this one mean one, this one, oh, oh, oh. by the time anybody came, we threw them out. And all of them then teaching, this is not the characteristic. So then they begin to train us again with the same, the philosophy, and not the philosophy, but the, the way of perfection of character and faith, that I'm doing what I do purely for Divinely Presence, working towards that. Nobody is there, but we're taking a path of Divine Satisfaction. That who am I to judge God's creation? I'm merely here to serve them and be polite and respectful to them. And then I should be competing in humility. But when you see somebody not respectful to you because they're judging you, they think themselves better than you. And that is purely and 100% completely the wrong intention. If you are living your life with that intention, you're going around and judging. Most likely your wife or your husband knows the character because you go home the whole way driving, hearing about all the judgment. Now this one, that, that one, this, this one like that, that one like that. And those are not the characteristics of perfection. The divine teaching, no, no, no. You compete in humility. Be humble and loving to everyone because you want my satisfaction. Who cares if that's an arrogant or is an oppressor or is a crazy person? You're not being humble and loving to them because of them. You are being loving because of Him. You are being kind because of Him. You are being generous because of Him. If it is Him, Allah that you worship. Allah says, if you're doing it for me, I'm taking the hisab, I'm watching you. I see how you're humble with everyone and you're loving with everyone. You serve believer and non-believer, you serve beautiful and ugly, you serve everything in creation because they're all my creation. You're not judging them, you're serving them, you're humble to them, you're loving to them, you're compassionate to them. And I'm giving you his heart, I'm giving you the reward. If it's me that you worship and the reward you want from my Divine the Presence, then I'm going to dress you with it. If we truly understand that, truly believe that, then our whole life is going to change. We're not going to be angry at everyone. We're not going to be angry at every situation that happened into my life. Oh, my life went like this because this person. My life went to this and this person. My life went into this and this person. No. From the ocean of Tawheed and oneness, everything happened the way Allah wanted it to happen. You have only Allah to be angry with if you dare to be angry with Divine the Presence. I mean, it's written. So then what to be angry at all the characters within the play? Live my life based on submission. My Lord, this is the situation that I'm in. I'm going to perfect myself. This is the condition. I do good and I don't get good in return. I'm doing it for your Divine the Pleasure. I want to be humble and loving to all your creation and I take a path of humility. Path of humility is agreeing to be humiliated. Some cultures, they think humility is to come and offer the shaykh a tea. Shaykh, would you make a tea in front of everybody? They say, why is such a humble guy? Look, he's kind. No, no, no. <laughs> the correct understanding of humility is to accept Allah humiliating you. Then you look at the lives of pious people, they took a path in Allah's direction and what the order was? Go sit on the outside of the town. Many of the saints, go sit on the outside of the town and everybody who comes, I'm going to have them beat you. But he didn't tell them that at first, said to the pious, we have many pious, you read Tazkiyat al -Oliyah, the lives of pious servants making meditation, making his connection, all his heart opening and commanded, now go to the edge of town. So all the travelers that are coming into the town, you give them a nice greeting of welcoming into the town. Like, Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi. This is a dress from that pious person. But because the town is filled with the zalim and oppressors, what did they do every time he gave salams? They beat him. Beat him. And his Reaction, Ya Rabbi, 
What's this? I'm worshipping you, loving you and your creation beating me, kicking me, humiliating me. And then what Allah wants? Then pray for their forgiveness. Take their difficulty and pray for their forgiveness. Take their difficulty and pray for their forgiveness. If you wanted them to praise you, wrong path. But if they're going to inflict their difficulty upon you and you're going to forgive them, then you are of a saintly character. Then they begin to teach from all their teachings how much difficulty they took on, how much difficulty they took on, not to judge that creation, but to pray for them. To ask that the Divine bless them and forgive them. Because now they're owed something from Divinely Presence. Means then the characters of perfection and the way of perfection, very difficult, very different than what we understand from the material world. The material world is completely a different way of teaching. That if you're wrong, wrong somebody. And judge in every action that you do, judge the person if you should do it or not. Find if there's a profit or if a benefit in it. And then we do that action. But with the Divine is completely different. There is no profit in it. There's no benefit that you can understand in it. The only benefit should be that Allah the Divine Presence is rida and satisfying us. Then we know that we are being effaced. We are being effaced. We are being brought down. We are being cleansed. We are being washed, washed, washed. Only at that time Allah then begins to dress that servant with sincerity. That that servant and that soul is a sincere soul. It's not judgment upon Allah's creation. And that way we should live a more satisfying life and understand the difficulties that come around us. Instead of arguing...